Listen up. These are moves you'll want to make. Hey, I'm Anita Joyce here with Kelly Wilkness, and this is Decorating Tips and Tricks, Episode 410, Furniture Arranging Tips. And we are moving things around. Do you have your sliders handy, Kelly? Oh, you know, I was hoping you would maybe link those because I still didn't get any sliders. Oh, Kelly! But I really don't think I need them, but, you know, I guess they could be useful in this case if you're really making some rapid moves and you're by yourself. But I do swear by the little, you know, washcloths or little rags under <laughs> under your furniture, but I, we digress. We'll get to that later on. Sometimes all you need to do is move stuff around a bit to really positively impact a space mm-hmm. so it doesn't cost you a dime unless maybe you buy the little movers. That Anita likes. You know, I think this is interesting. I mean, I'm glad we're doing this episode because I feel like before you spend a lot of money on buying stuff for your house, why don't you look at the layout first? I think it's good to do some things that don't cost anything first and see how far that'll go to fix your problem. And really today we're talking about a lot of stuff that really does not cost anything. It's moving things around. So I think this is a really nice place to start before you go saying, this is too big or I need this or that. Maybe you just need to move it around. Because we've all heard the saying, it's not what you got, but it's how you use it. So you might just be fine with what you got. You just got to move it around a little bit and set it up differently and, you know. Mm -hmm. have a whole new space, a whole new feel, Mm -hmm. because furniture placement and how it relates to the other pieces in the room really impacts the feel of the room, whether it be size, comfort, or even the mood of a space. Right. I would love to start with my favorite tip. Do it. Okay. We need a starting point. I think the thing to do first is to take a picture of your room. You're going to see things in the photo that you may not notice walking in the room. And this is going to really help you see the room from a different way of looking at it because you're experiencing the room. You're not noticing things because you're walking in the room. Your your eyes are ignoring things that it sees every day. But when you see it in the photo, I think that's a great way to look to see, is this a good layout? Is this too cluttered? It does it, you know, is it, is it, does, is it working for me? I think that's one thing. One is kind of walking around the room and seeing if you've got nice flow in the room. But the other thing is taking that picture and looking at it. And we'll be going through some things to look for in that photo. But let's start with that photo. And, you know, I love a before and after photo. So go ahead and take that picture. Well, also, it's very practical because what if you move it around and you don't like it? And then you can't remember how you had it before. And then, oh, <laughs> so if well, you have especially, a photo, you yeah. can put it back. Well, no kidding. Especially if you are cleaning a a built-in, some bookcases, uh-huh. that's a great thing to do is to take a picture of that. If you're wanting to put it back the way it was, I don't know how you do it unless you take a picture. I just did that. I think I might have mentioned in another episode, I had to take all my stuff out of the hutch in the kitchen. And it was it's all white. It's all white ironstone and various pieces of white uh, ceramics. And so, you know, it was even, I had to like not only take the picture, but then I had to make it really big to say, oh, what platter was that? You know, is that one with the gold rim? Because Mm -hmm. everything just fit perfectly. And I really liked the way it looked. And it took me a long time to get it that way. So I was so glad that I had thought to take that picture to start out with. And now everything's really clean and back where. Okay, well, I just want to add, oh yeah. So I want to add a few things that really don't have to do with this topic that have to do with some photos because I'm just thinking about them. I don't want to forget this. Okay. And that is if you're leaving to go on vacation, take a picture of your stove, of your thermostat, of any doors that you've locked, of your hair dryer, your curling iron, whatever. And so that while you're gone, you're not going to be asking yourself, did I unplug that Did I turn that off? Oh my gosh, that's hilarious. I would never think to do that. But I definitely have thought, hmm, did I leave something on? And that's an awful thought. Yes, I. so there's been a couple of cases where I've wondered about something for several weeks. And I just thought, I'm 95% sure (laughs) the (laughs) oven is not on. But there was a little bit of doubt in the back of my mind. So just take those pictures. And then the corollary is, 
to take pictures of your pantry or maybe kind of storage areas where you keep food and supplies. And then when you go to the store, if you can't remember, I mean, also keep a list on your, I keep a list on my phone of my shopping list. Right. But I also like to keep pictures of my pantry. And then I just look in there sometimes I could, because I may see things and it's not on the list, but do I need more? Stop it. I mean, this, is a, this was some good off-roading we just did. I know. I know. Wow. Wow. Okay. Good to know. Nice tips. All right. Let's get back on. Let's drive right. back onto the road. Okay. So everybody is different and that's what makes the world go round. Um, so you might want to approach switching your furniture around a different way. Like Anita really likes those movie things. And I really just use little rags. Although I keep telling her I might buy the little movie things. People Sliders. Also, sliders. 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 Um, which makes me think of small hamburgers, which makes me think of dinner. Um, Hamburglar? Is that what you're... <laughs> no, like little slider hamburgers. Oh, sliders. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so you could move your room around virtually on a computer. And there mm-hmm. are certain companies and brands that offer this on their website. But of course, they're just letting you sort of plug in their furniture. Um, I couldn't find one that was just sort of generic. I think there may have been one for Better Homes and Gardens that was kind of generic where you could put in different things. But I think it's, for me, even though I spent a lot of time for work on the computer, that's not the way I would want to move my room around. Um, People can also tape things off. Now, of course, this may be if you don't have any furniture in the room or you're looking to add a certain piece, maybe you have the dimensions of the piece you're considering and you could put painter's tape on the ground. You know, don't use some sort of tape that's going to pull up any Mm -hmm. of the finish on your floor, obviously. Painter's tape, use painter's tape. Yeah, that or is and that frog tape is probably good too, but that blue painter's tape mm-hmm. is good. But my favorite method is just move it around because uh-huh. nothing's going to give you the feel True. like really moving the stuff and then being able to sit on it and seeing the different perspectives you might get and how the furniture relates to each other. But, you know, it doesn't hurt to take out graph paper and do yourself a little drawing. I mean, some people that helps them visualize it or helps them get to the next step. So whatever really works for you, or you, if you don't know, then you could try these various methods. Uh, but at the end of the day, at some point, you're just going to have to really move the furniture. Well, I think the reason that you might want to tape it out or do it on your computer or something first is if you're moving from one house to another, or you know, if it's a hassle to move the item, then you want to have it planned out ahead of time. If we're talking about you're hiring people to come move things from upstairs to downstairs or back and forth, then I think you want to have a good feel for where everything's going. But if it's all on the same level and you can just move it around yourself with sliders, then I agree with you. I think the really the well and really the best way to see how it's going to look is just to look at it. But sometimes it's an expensive proposition to hire somebody and then you move it and then go, you know what? That's not really working right. there. Right. And then I do want to mention about the sliders because I had, I was at a house recently. Um, be sure and remove them when your furniture's where you want it to be. So it's not really something you want to. <laughs> Cause they keep I sliding. didn't think I needed to say this, but, uh, but don't leave know. them. Don't leave them under your furniture once you've moved them where you want your furniture to be. They're, they're not the little felt t- things. Just buy the felt things to go under. Right. Oh, my gosh. Isn't that- yeah. Well, now now you know. Gosh, uh, you're full of good tips. <laughs> well, okay. Uh, whatever you say. So another thing to talk about is making sure you know what the focal point in the room is because that's going to help you decide on your furniture arranging And most rooms have a natural focal point, like, for example, in a living room, your focal point is going to be where your eye naturally goes. And your eye is going to go someplace where it makes sense. So like in a living room, if you walk in, usually the fireplace is the first thing that you notice. If you're going into a bedroom, usually the focal point is going to be the bed. Right. So keep that in mind. If you want some particular wall to be a focal point, that's where you might want to add a big piece of artwork or a big mirror or a big piece of furniture. Good tip. Yes. Yeah, definitely want to um, take into consideration that focal point. And if you don't have a focal point, then you might want to come up with one. And maybe that, if in a room that doesn't have a fireplace or doesn't have a great 
panel of windows or doesn't have a big piece of art, you know, maybe it is a sofa or something like that. Mm-hmm. I, mean, um, I would suggest, particularly if you're working with furniture that you have on hand, whether it's all in the same room or it's in different places in your house, clear the room in question of all small pieces mm-hmm. of furniture mm-hmm. and clutter uh, uh, well, let's start with the clutter. Clear it of the clutter, then clear it of the small decorative items, and then maybe even clear it of the small furniture because you really want to focus on the big pieces first mm-hmm. and how are they going to in- work big pieces first and how are they going to in- work together, ingress and egress, so passages and paths throughout the room because most rooms uh, in a home – lead on to another room. So it may be it's not the room you have to march through from the front door, but you still are going to need a path through it, Mm -hmm. particularly if it's a living room or family room that's going to be somehow adjacent to a kitchen. You know, there's going to be a lot of activity back and forth between those two rooms. So you, I think you really want to focus on how the big pieces play in the room. And speaking of the word big, oftentimes people have furniture that's just too big for their rooms. And there was a time not too long ago, everybody, where all the arms were rolled and all the bits were overstuffed and the furniture just got so big. So if you are in a position uh, of perhaps even replacing some items or adding some items, you first want, might want to assess whether or not the pieces that you have actually work as far as scale with respect mm-hmm. to the Mm-hmm. Oh, I think you're so uh, so right on that. I mean, sometimes you have a piece of furniture and it's really just overpowering for a room. But the other thing we've seen is sometimes a room is just ends up getting full of lots of little pieces of furniture. And I've seen that a lot too, where maybe there's a room where it's kind of the room where all the leftovers go, or yeah. even if it's not where all the left, it just kind of ends up getting that feeling if it's a lot of little pieces. So I agree with you about pulling all those pieces out first and then start putting things back kind of one at a time because, um, you know, a lot of times you probably have too many small pieces in the room. And then if you have big pieces in the room, you know, sometimes it doesn't work if you have a really small chair next to a really large, very tall or very wide chest. So keep that in mind. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So, you know, you're arranging... It really needs to start with, you know, the space itself, take that into consideration, the scale of the furniture, and then you're going to dive into, well, how are these pieces going to work in this particular room based on the shape of the room? Is it long and narrow? Is it boxy? You know, where are the windows and all that? And and how do the pieces play together? Um, So ways to set up your rooms. Well, the default is everything against the wall. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right? And that's what a lot of people do because, I, you know, it just seems like, sure, you you want to have, you feel, have your room feel spacious, so the furniture shouldn't be in the middle of the room. It should be pushed as far as it can be away from the center of the room and away from the other pieces. But really, in actuality, unless you've got a super small room, that's probably not the best arrangement. And so if you're doing that right now, One of the first things you could do before even doing any other dramatic moving or removing is maybe just pull it away from the walls a little bit. You know, if you want to sort of dip your toe into this, pull it away from the wall. Maybe put a console table behind it. Uh, You know, gather those chairs around where people can actually have a conversation together. Uh, Creating smaller areas within, you know, even an average size room can actually even make the room feel bigger. Kind of think Mm -hmm. about the idea of a garden. If you have a flat expanse of lawn in your backyard and you can see it all, well, even if it's gigantic, as far as square footage of grass, it still just kind of looks like, you know, one big square or one big rectangle. But if you start breaking that up into smaller rooms or smaller areas, where des- things, designated things happen, the whole space takes on a whole different feel and it actually feels bigger. And this is definitely a way to make a small backyard feel much bigger is to break it into rooms. So if you apply that same the theory to your living room or whatever room you're rearranging the furniture in, you may actually create 
you're not adding any square footage, but you are creating the sense of a bigger space because you can be over here having a conversation with your neighbor who just popped by on two chairs with a little table next to you. Or you could be then at another time laying on the sofa and watching a movie or on your iPad or something like that. And then maybe over here, there's um, a small writing desk or a small gaming table, you know, and that you can do things at. That's a different task. And it actually makes the room feel larger. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think you're right. And, you know, if you have an open concept house like we do, then it really makes sense to kind of partition off your room visually. So we have one large open concept space. One area is the living room, one is the kitchen, and one is the breakfast room. And we've even partitioned off the kitchen partition. I mean, what I mean to say Kitchen is, partitioned? <laughs> uh, what I mean is the living room behind the sofa. Yeah. The, the kitchen, if you're in the kitchen, you were facing the back of the sofa. So, so you wouldn't feel like you were on the outside looking in. Right. We put a chest and a chair behind the sofa. So you feel like, oh, I'm in my kitchen area and I'm not rather outside of the living room going, hello. hello. Right, right. So it, it feels, um, you know, very, uh, it, it, it makes sense for the space. So I think that's a good point. Another thing to really think about is symmetry. Now, I th you can definitely overdo it, but your eye wants the space to have order. And some symmetry in the room gives a feeling of order. And if it's too, if it's cluttered, your eye, it's, it's going to stress you in a way that you might not even be aware of. If there's no symmetry, it can stress you. I mean, this is something that's very calming. When your eye sees some order, some visual order, it's a calming thing. So kind of look to see if the if there's some symmetry in the room. And not everything has to be symmetrical, but I think you do want some symmetry in the room uh, as it relates to balance. Yes, and uh, symmetry, I love it. And we should a link to our symmetry mm -hmm. episode because there's a lot of great information in there. So let's do that. And the the word that uh, that you used, balance, you have to really mm -hmm. consider that when you are rearranging your furniture. You don't want all the heavy pieces on one end of the room or one side of the room and light and airy pieces on the other. You want to have that. You want to create symmetry in your balance, like Anita just said. And, you know, just think of it as like a seesaw. Like if everything heavy is at one end of the room, you know, that pulls it down a little bit. It might be beautiful things, but it's going to make it feel wrong. Like you want the seesaw to be even, mm -hmm. right? Well, like when you were little and you'd want to you know, even it out with your friend. <laughs> I know I always did that. Right? <laughs> It'll be like, how can, and everybody's on their tiptoes trying to even it out. Yeah. So there's a skill to doing that. And just like there's a skill to balancing your room. So figure out, you know, oh, if I've got some dark pieces on this side, I want to want to put a couple of dark pieces on that side. And I want to want to incorporate some lighter, airier pieces on both sides to balance it out. Um, so that's super important when you're rearranging your furniture. Another idea is to put things on the diagonal. I can't, I love that. And you know, I don't know, do people call it kitty corner, diagonal, whatever you want to call it. Um, there's a couple of different terms for that. So, you know, something that is going to be not stuffed into a corner, but sort of, you know, shaving off the corner and sort of rounding out the room. Um, of course, the a larger size room can accommodate this a little better because it does make your furniture uh, jut out a little bit further into the center. Mm -hmm. But, you know, again, depends on the scale of your furniture. Um, this could really be accomplished in any size room. And it does just sort of, it softens it. It makes it, all the pieces almost feel like they're engaged, you know, and so whoever's sitting on it or, you know, in that space is going to feel like they're part of the whole is if you have a chair that's smack against the wall, you know, it kind of feels like a timeout chair. Like kind of feels yeah. like you were put over there because you got in trouble and you're not <laughs> supposed to talk to the other people that are in the room. Yeah, no, that's a good point. I, I wanted to talk a little bit also about the layout of the room where it comes to some dimensions to think about. And one is for traffic flow areas. You want to have at least a 30 inch, 30 inches of passageway around furniture. Uh, so make sure you have that much of leeway. So you don't want to, you know, have a chair sticking out in a, in a passageway where, you know, it's just somebody has to slide by. Um, and I've got one place at the farm kind of like that. That's a little tough 
but uh, I don't know. We kind of, we, it's probably not quite 30 inches, but I'm, you know, I do my best there. Uh, you want 14 to eight inch, 18 inches between the sofa and the coffee table. And then keep in mind uh, for a standard viewing distance for a TV, you want it to be eight to 12 feet away from the sofa. A dining room table, you want to have at least 36 inches away from each wall. And one other dimension for you, if you have a seating area, you don't want the seating to be more than eight feet away from each other. Well, kind of like you were saying, you know, you want the seating area. So you don't, if you had a room where all the seating was just on the walls, it's probably more than eight feet away. So you want, you want... So, I mean, another way to think of it, if you don't want to think about the numbers, is sit in the chair or the sofa in your room and look at somebody sitting in the other chair and think, does this feel like a comfortable conversation or does it feel like I'm having to raise my voice to talk to that person? If you feel like they're too far away, like for you to have a private conversation with, or if you're having to raise your voice, then the seating's too far away. Good point. When you said it, I don't know, my head just visualized a dining room and I was like, oh, what does that mean? But now I see what you're saying. So in in a living room situation where um, you'd have chairs where people could have conversation. Got it. Right, right. Rifting off that, have a place to put drinks or feet oh, right. in your room. So mm-hmm. this is really important in the re- arranging because you know it needs to be comfortable. Not only will this enhance the room and make it look beautiful and make it look like a room somebody wants to be in, but it'll actually be comfortable when you're in there. You know, if uh, particularly if it's someone visiting, uh, you know, they might not feel comfortable you know, reaching all the way over and putting their glass down, or they certainly wouldn't feel comfortable like leaning over and putting it on the floor probably. And then, so they'd be holding in their hand. So even if it's a small little side table or nesting tables are great for, like that, make sure that every place that you're inviting someone to sit has a comfortable place to put a drink or a glass or mm-hmm. even a magazine or your glasses, something that you can reach to without, you know, really overextending or getting up off your chair to do that. Um, another point, and I'm sure Anita will echo this, is anchor your areas with rugs. So if you've got a couple of conversational areas in one room, you could even do two different rugs. Oh, yeah, that's a great idea. So that kind of makes, you know, it gives it, um, it grounds it and just gives it sort of the parameters. You're saying, okay, this area is for, you know, do it, we're doing this over here. We're doing this over here. And if it's one big space where everybody's watched the TV together, whatever the activity is in there, then the rug should be under all those pieces of furniture. And you're going to want to add some height in a room. Sometimes you're looking at a, an arrangement of furniture in a room and, and maybe all the furniture is playing nicely together and it, and it is comfortable and you've got the chair as a, near each other and you've got tables and maybe you threw in an ottoman for some feet and you've got a good sized coffee table and everything's where it's supposed to be. But everything just looks like it kind of stops maybe a third of the way up the wall. You know, everything's just low and that can make a room feel you know, it's it's like you, your mind, your eyes, like they do when they take the photo, like your your eyes are giving your mind clues as to what you think about the room. And if it's all down low, you might feel like a little oppressed in the room in a way, you know? <laughs> I mean, you know, not- Like you're oh, being held down? Yeah, like, I mean, you know, it's not <laughs> something you might even be able to articulate, but, you know, sometimes when you just have a room and you're like, what is wrong with it? You know, sometimes mm-hmm. it's the balance and you figure that out and you're like, bam, fixed it. But if everything's low, you might get that sort of closed in feeling. So put in, put a tall standing lamp, put maybe in one of those cool arced lamps, get a big plant or- uh, you know, if you don't have window treatments and you think that might help put the window treatments up high and maybe do them in an accent color or something, so it'll bring your eye up. Don't you just love a great recommendation from a friend? Well, we're delighted to be recommending these companies and their wonderful products to you today. And let them know your friends at DTT sent you. Green Chef is a delicious delight any time of year, but especially during the holidays. What a wonderful vision to behold of the Green Chef boxes on your doorstep. Green Chef is the number one meal kit for eating well. And it makes eating well so easy with plans to fit every lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat a more balanced diet. 
So let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season. And if you've got guests coming, shop Green Bundles. They're now available at the Green Market. It's your one-stop shop for nutritious grab-and-go breakfast, including vegan options, brunch kits, wholesome lunches, ready-to-eat snacks, veggie sides, and more. You can feel your best this December and do your best with Green Chef because they offset 100% of the delivery emissions as well as 100% of the plastic in every box. Go to greenchef.com slash 60DTT and use the code 60DTT and get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. Greenchef.com slash 60DTT and use the code 6060DTT to get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. Pesto pork chops over Parmesan polenta. Not that easy to say, but oh, so easy to make with Green Chef. Green Chef is the number one meal kit company for eating well, and we have such a great deal for you. You're going to save $250. Listen on for the details on that. Green Chef makes eating well easy for any lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat more balanced meals. You know, we're getting into the busy holiday season, so it's a perfect time to have Green Chef help you out. Let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season with their chef-crafted, nutritionist-approved recipes featuring fresh ingredients and nothing artificial. And you know what? You don't have to lose track of your healthy eating habits during the holidays. Every Green Chef customer gets a free, that's right, a free session with their registered dietitians who will walk you through how to make clean eating work for you. So sign up for your free session and start on the road towards better health today. And the deal I want to tell you about, visit greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. So that's greenchef.com slash DTT250 and use the code DTT250 for $250 off your order. Just shaking it up and moving things around, rearranging, taking some of these tips that we gave you today that you can implement so easily and, you know, probably all on your own, especially if you do invest in those sliders, um, you know, can really change up a room. And what a great time of year to do it, sort of in the springtime. Then maybe add some new toss pillows and you're going to feel like you have a whole new room. And we've been kind of like talking today about this imaginary room as if it was a family room or a living room. But this information can pertain to really any room in your house. Don't you think, Anita? Oh, oh, yes, of course. And uh, yeah, I think it definitely applies to any room. It's just slightly different depending on what room. But uh, I think the general principles do apply to all rooms. And I wanted to kind of just summarize the key words from today. We talked about balance of the room. We talked about scale. We talked about symmetry, focal points, and zones. So I think those are kind of the things to keep in mind. Yeah, zones being like creating different seating areas or, or, right, or or just kind of, or like I said, in my house, we have the breakfast room table in one corner of the room and then the living room furniture in the other part of the room. So yeah, kind of like that. Yeah. Are you ready for the hot topic? I love this hot topic. Yes, I am. (laughs) Okay. This is from the Wall Street Journal. And in their design section, this article is called Best in Show from 2020's Paris Design Fair. And this was really interesting. They have several uh, products that they are featuring. We'll include a link. So you'll get to go see these yourself because some of these... Kelly, I'm really having a hard time describing that sofa in there. Uh, Yeah. Yeah, the sofa, I'm not even (laughs) sure what's going on. You guys are just going to have to look. Well, the sofa, let me say this. It looks like the top of the ocean. It looks like waves. Yes. It's not like a sofa. It looks like waves. And you can't tell where you're supposed to sit, where you're leaning against. It's not even a flat place for you to, to lie down. So I'm not really getting that particular piece. Um it's uh, some French furniture. Those, uh, those freaky Frenchies. I don't it's, know. It's called, they call it dune-like. Yeah. And it's the Asmara sofa. And um, 
Wow, it's cheaper than I thought it was going to be. Eight hundred twenty-five dollars to a thousand one twenty-five. Aren't weren't you surprised? Well, yes, but it's that's each module. Oh, oh, okay. So there you go. That one you're viewing when you guys click on, you see that they have. I so think that's there's. I, I think it looks like twelve modules. Yeah, twelve. Okay. Mod- yeah. Yeah, so it's really not that cheap. But, you know, what really surprised me is how inexpensive everything was, like the uh, $4,900 lamp. <laughs> well, wasn't that the thing? I know. Now, apparently, it, it is, is made from recycled materials. Well, honestly, I thought it was much better than the rug they showed that looks like someone was freehand drawing a circle and they kind of got interrupted halfway through. It looks like something you'd see under a microscope that might give you kudos. A little bit. And that one is... Oh, 2818 uh, Up to 4610 And I'm thinking, I don't know. That's just... I just don't want that in my house. Even if someone gave it to me, I would say no thank you. I know. So, like, if you landed from a different uh, planet... And you didn't, you know, you didn't, you weren't predisposed to think that the French have this fabulous style and, and, uh, you know, that everything that comes out of France or anything now, stamped with France is The fabulous. rug is Dutch. I, I have to. Okay. But, you know, if you read this article and you were from a, from a foreign planet, you would be like, these French people are whack. So you would not think too much about it because they're picking this, right? Best in show from Paris's design fair. Well, like- I don't know that, that that Paris is saying it. This, I think the writer for the Wall Street Journal is saying that this is the best. But this kind of scares me if this is the best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's the, their Maison and uh, Object. Uh, I'm sure I didn't pronounce that right, but that's it's their uh, yeah their design show they have every year. These were the best in show example. Okay, well, we don't know who's right. who's picking the best in show, but I assume the writer. A yeah. few things I that I. One thing I did like. Well, I love. I liked two of the things. Probably the same probably. things you like. Well, I really like the um, designer John Darian, and he lives in New York, and he has a really mm-hmm. cool website. Some kind of like edgy stuff, but like edgy in a familiar way. It's kind of really cool. Yes. Like you know, almost like if you see a twall, but it's like, oh, it's not the French people. It's like new buildings in New York City or something like that. That's kind of how he does his work. Like. There's some familiarity to it, but he's got an edge to it. And I just like his sort of, he's, it's just a very patinaed overall look. Well, if you don't know John Darian, you should have a look at his work in, in and of itself. But these vegetable plates and then the white plates that he offers on his website are, are pretty spectacular. Oh, well, and the reason it feels familiar, uh, it says in the article, it's a folio of 18th century botanical engravings. Uh, that inspired him to collaborate with a Paris-based ceramicist, uh, Astur, Astur de Villante, uh, and then they made some some plates. So I thought this was and a beautiful... And then they made some plates. It's just what happened. Yeah, I mean, they're beautiful. But he does have an, also another white um, porcelain, ceramic, what have you, a line with that same company on his website too and that stuff is really beautiful. well and then uh the next thing i thought was interesting was it's called an old tale well woven so this was this is french a french wicker workshop that made these their their wicker i guess you'd call it a, it's a column and an urn but it's made out of wicker and i thought it was very interesting yes it's a column it's a circular tall column with a bit of a Flute at the bottom, oh, right, made out right. of wicker, just plain wicker. Then it's an urn, you know, sort of shaped like a champagne bucket in a sense. In black. Yeah, the and it's painted is. in pharaoh and ball because they have, you can customize the urn. And it's painted in pharaoh and ball off black. So, you know, it's basically spray painted, my favorite matte black. Um, and you know what? For those two pieces... It's only, I did the, I went over to the site. <laughs> this n- this number in the article, I must tell you, is incorrect. Because when you, oh, when really? you click okay. through and you see who's actually selling it, um, mm-hmm. yeah, it's another company and it was in pounds. And when you converted that to American dollars, it was $6,157.48 mm. for a wicker urn on a wicker <laughs> column. <laughs> Well, none of this stuff is going to Walmart. 
No, but I found you. If you like the idea of a urn shaped natural fiber type of thing for your home, which could be really pretty for spring, like, you know, put some flowers in it or put a plant in it. Ballard has one in seagrass for $79.20 US. Who does? Ballard. No column. You'd have to hold it up high. Yeah. I mean, my concern with this is I'm putting something, you know, I'm on the ladder, putting something in a bookcase. I fall off the ladder and then the thing is toast. Oh. Because I smush it. Oh, yeah. This is easily smushable. And I don't think it has the glass insert like the Ballard item does. But anyway, well, there you go. it's kind of fun. To, it's a great article. It's fun to look at what's going on, you know, on the other side there in France and what people are bringing to the table there. Uh-huh. But, I, you know, I say if you've... I think it's like the runway. You know, this is not stuff that most people have in their home, just like the fashions on the runway. Yeah. Aren't things you're going to see just walking down the street? Yeah. But you know, yeah. they're in- it's interesting. I found it fascinating. Yeah, and, and part of the article too was about this these items called blobjects. So stuff that's just sort of like looks like a blob, like a chair that looks like a blob, or a <laughs> chandelier that looks like a blob. So I don't really know what's going on. There are you think maybe they're running out of ideas. I don't- I don't know. I don't know. But hey, it was interesting to know. Anyway, it's good to be, you know, knowledgeable about all things that are going on. And we all like design. Mm -hmm. So you never know, Mm -hmm. you know, where that's going to take anything. Maybe the blob will then turn into something in a couple of years that we all like. I don't know. I I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, what is your crush? I want to know. Uh, You come up with so many wonderful well, thank you. Things that I must know about. What is it today? Well, you're going to like this one because it's a, it's a tea. And I had mentioned this in, Ooh. yeah, I had mentioned this in the Team DTT live. And I thought oh, I should fairly tell everybody because it's just so good. Um, it's the Art of Tea, Earl Grey Creme Tea. Mm. And Art of Tea Art is of the brand? Tea is the, the brand is the company, okay. and actually they are very close by to me in California, which I didn't know that. Uh, I had it out at a restaurant, and I, all the women I were with, was, were with, one of them was like, oh, you must try this tea. I know you love tea, mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. And we were all just like ooing and eyeing. <laughs> we have our cups, and we're like, oh my gosh, this smells so great. It tastes so So yummy. you said creme. creme. Is there milk in it? No, but it has this oh. sense. It's very rich and and luxurious and it almost Ooh. feels like I mean I do put half and half in it on top of it but it you know oh, it's a uh-huh. black tea it's mm-hmm. clearly earl gray but it's got the bergamot but it's got this cream thing going on which I've never experienced I've had 80 mm. million different kinds of earl gray teas in my life so I would highly recommend it I'll- maybe they frothed it or something I wonder I don't, I mean, it's just, it looks like regular black tea when you make it. Oh, it does. Okay, yeah, there's okay. no oh, frothiness going on. You, it's, in the, it's in the taste and the way it feels on your tongue. Like, it definitely feels rich. So I highly recommend you to try it. Mm. Um, so that was mine. Yeah. And um, I've already had like three or four cups of that today. <laughs> um, well, I might, you know, I don't normally like Earl Grey, but I might have to try this one. This one sounds really fascinating. Yeah, yeah, and Art of Tea okay. just seems like a really interesting company, a small company. So you, you know, you might go on there, and maybe Earl Grey's not your thing either. But check some of the other stuff out; they have all kinds of tea. Okay, while you're drinking that, I found something fun for you to watch. Ooh, Masterpiece! I love Masterpiece uh-huh. on PBS. Okay. They have so many fun things, and we're members of our local, well, I guess, uh, station. So I get to watch online a lot of the shows. Uh-huh. So I don't have to record them or wait till they come out. It's just a nice way to support public broadcasting. If you did join, you get a tote bag because I, yeah, I think. Uh, did I? No, but we got something else, and I can't remember. You know, there's what it a was. certain woman who has there's, a PBS I've never had, tote bag. <laughs> <laughs> I do not have the tote bag. I think uh, I don't know. We got some DVDs or something, which whatever. Uh, but this is a very interesting. It's called Beecham House, so it's set. Right before the turn of the 19th century. So it's late. It's late 1700s. Late 1700s. Okay. Right. So it's. um, We've turned so many centuries. You got to. I sorry. It's our. It says. Yeah. It says on the cusp of the 19th century, which I guess that's it's too confusing to say it that way. It's the late 1700s. That's better. Okay. Yeah. Let's just say it that way. And, And so it's in Delhi. It's it's set in Delhi. Uh, before the British, you know, rule the region and the, the this uh, Beecham 
John Beecham was a British Army officer, and he kind of didn't like the colonization and everything and the way the the Indian people were being treated. So he left the Army and uh, started his own business, bought this large mansion. And, well, as you might guess, to make a great story, everything starts falling apart for <laughs> him. Uh, he ends up in jail at one oh, point. My. and. Uh, uh, yeah, accused of something he didn't do. Anyway, there's romance and and sword play and all kinds of fun things. So uh, the author is I'm sure I'm going to butcher this, but it's Gurinder Shadha. Sure, it is. Uh, I know, yeah. I know, it's something like this. I'm sorry. That's okay, Gurinder, because I'm sure I'm mis- brutally. We're going to put the link. So and, and yeah, but she wrote Bend It Like Beckham. Do you remember Bend It Like Beckham? I love that movie. It's set in, oh, that's a whole nother story. I'll link to that. <laughs> okay. That was, that's a fun, that's a very fun movie, Bride and Prejudice, which is an Indian film. The kind of, oh, it's, like, a, it's Bollywood, Bollywood, but it's based yeah. on Pride and Prejudice. Oh, fun. And the Viceroy's House. Oh, so, which Hugh Bonneville oh, was in just, Viceroy House. You have just opened up a whole line of things that we can all enjoy. Wow. Oh, yeah. So I love this author. I mean, she's great. She's written some really fabulous uh, stuff. And in and you'll find a very familiar... Now, a lot of these characters, a lot of these actors were in other shows that you've oh, seen. Oh, I know. They just, and, those Brits, they just recycle everyone. I, they do. And so if you look, you don't even have to look closely, but if you watch it, you'll never guess who John Beecham's mother is. It's Mrs. Patmore. Oh! Mammy. <laughs> Inevitably, with the new year come wellness goals. One very effective and easy to reach goal is to add dose to your wellness regime. Dose is expertly formulated organic wellness shots that support your liver in one delicious drink. Formulated with ingredients clinically shown to support liver health, potent turmeric, milk thistle, and ginger. There's zero sugar and zero calories. Did you know that your liver performs over 500 special functions? Since I learned all that my liver is doing, I started with Dose to support all those vital functions. I take a shot of refreshing Dose two times per week to combat everyday toxins from food, meds, alcohol, and unhealthy air. Since starting with Dose about a month ago, I am definitely feeling an overall improvement in my health. So if you want to give Dose a shot and invest in your health like I have, Dose is offering DTT listeners 15% off your first order, plus an additional 15% off if you subscribe for a monthly delivery. That's 30% off your first order. So go to dosedaily.co slash DTT and use the code DTT. That's dosedaily.co.co slash DTT and use the code DTT. Go ahead, clean out your closet, then head straight to Quince. I love every item Quince offers from wardrobe to decor, and I can really recommend their Ultra Stretch Super Wide Leg Pant at forty nine ninety. The price is unbeatable, and the look is so flattering. It keeps you in on top and flares out of the bottom. Everything feels right with Quince. The price, the quality, and the sustainability. Quince offers a range of luxury wardrobe and home goods at prices within reach. And like Quince's clothing, their home goods are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices, along with premium fabrics and finishes. Once you've cleaned out your closet and refreshed with Quince, you can also add something to your home decor. So give your wardrobe and your home the refresh it needs with Quince. Go to quince.com slash DTT to get free shipping and 365-day returns on your next order. That's quince, Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash DTT for free shipping and 365-day returns. Quince.com slash DTT. And let me know how you love those pants. I love that Mrs. Patmore got out of the kitchen. She did, and now she's she's a very nice lady. Yes, Good so she's for her. a little she's a little thrown off by all the stuff in India. She does not know what to make of all the you know the customs that seem very strange to her. But anyway, oh how fun! Okay, good to know. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I love it. That's great. All right, let's. So we have a question today, and I think that this question may plague a lot of people. And it has, if it hasn't plagued you yet, if you're at all into decorating and design, it probably will plague you at some point in your mm-hmm. life. 
how do you get your punch list done without punching someone? So this is a question from Gina R. And Gina is at the end of a big renovation and she's oh, she's weary. And, you know, it's very hard to get the people to come back uh, to finish up. And it's it's just something that I, I think it runs across state lines, mm-hmm. country lines. Mm-hmm. It's just part of the way that business is done. Contractors often have a couple of gigs going at one time. And of course, they want to come and do the big job where they've got their guys there all day. Nobody wants right. to come back and do the last few little things like, oh, no, tighten this up or, oh, no, you forgot don't. to put the threshold in the door. Or, this is crooked. You know, so how do you get that done? Uh, do you just go, huh, well, you know, good enough as it is and move on? Or mm-hmm. do you, you know, just like go to the, the map? with these people. Um, You know, obviously it depends on your personality and the relationship that you have with your contractor or your, if you're the general contractor yourself with your subs. So, you know, always, you know, kindness always prevails as long as you can, you know, keep Mm -hmm. that up. But at some point, you know, you need to be done and it needs to be done right. Um, My best advice to you is Keep on top of it. You know, Gina, I don't know how much is on your list, but, you know, try to make sure that they don't leave. If you notice something is wrong or something is Mm -hmm. crooked, if it's an easy fix on that day, you know, always go and if you're not living in, go and check the work. Um, Make sure that, you know, before everybody packs up that day, it's done so it doesn't end up on the punch list. So you're sort of like preventing that from happening. Um, And... You know, sometimes you just, you don't want to be like feeling like, oh, I'm stingy. I'm not paying them their last bit. But, you know, withholding funds <laughs> legitimately is often, you know, the fastest route to getting your punch list mm-hmm. accomplished. So, you know, every, of course, somebody say, oh, well, you know, here my, the last payment is due this day and we'll come back. And, you know, after you get to, to check everything mm-hmm. out, if you've got some little things to do, we'll come back and do it. Well, you know, if that last check has been cashed, the chance of you getting people back in a timely fashion is just, you know, dwindling. Uh Right. I mean, it definitely what I do is what you just said. I mean, if it's a small, if it's kind of big enough around the house, I withhold that 10% until every little detail is done. Right. Because once they're fully paid, it is it is very difficult to get them back. Yeah. And, you know, give yourself some time too. I mean, I we've talked about this before in different circumstances, like, oh, you need to have your paint. You need to have your paint tomorrow. Uh, you know, and you find that out of three and because your contractor got an opening and so he wants to come and paint your house and you don't have your paints. Well, you, you don't want to run like a crazy person to, you know, to the store and then getting these little chips and make that sort of decision. The same sort of thing holds true with the punch list. Yeah. You know, if, if someone is done, sometimes it, you know, they're finishing something up and it's dark out or, you know, you, if, particularly if it's a house that you're not living in yet, maybe you don't have proper lighting to even look and make sure anything that was done right you know if they get their check tomorrow or they get their check on monday uh i would say you know i need i need to take a look at this you know with fresh eyes in the morning or i need to come back with you to on monday or tomorrow and look at everything and make sure it's done and then i'll write you your check that's very legitimate um and if it's an ongoing if you had a big renovation like i did here and i have in the past and you have kind of a running punch list and you're finding things out as you're going along, uh, you know, keep, make it very clear, uh, put it in writing, send an email, you know, make sure that it's listed and even prioritized as far as the things you want to get done first, but be strong and don't give up. I have one thing that it bugs me and I, it was the littlest thing, but my toilet paper holder in the powder room is crooked. And my guy was here and I like him so much and his brother did it and his brother was kind of just like the helper. And I, you know, it was like, I just didn't want to call the, make, call attention to the brother didn't do a good job and I let it go. And I was like, whatever, it's like just a little off, but it's the kind that only has, you know, it's like kind of like a a hook in a sense. It doesn't have two sides and it doesn't have that little springy thing in the center. So it's like crooked. And so the toilet paper, like kind of, I mean, it doesn't slide off. It's not that bad, but it's crooked. And it bugs me every time I go in the power room. And I should have just said, 
instead, you know, instead of being like the nice girl and being like, whatever, I'm okay with it. I should have just said, Hey, it's on wrong. Don't, you know, just fix it. It it would have been like a, probably a 10 minute fix, but I didn't. And I regret it. So don't regret it, Gina. You know, hold them to yeah. it and get it done right. And, and that doesn't mean like going overboard and being like crazy about it. Um, but you know, it needs to be done right and the right for you. Oh yeah. And, and Gina, uh, yeah. I mean, I think this is, uh, I've really never had to get mean with contractors. I've just always been very, you know, fair and just kind of direct about it. And uh, I, and, and, but polite and, and I really haven't had an issue with uh, too much of that. I mean, one time, the person didn't want to come back and he didn't get the his final payment. So, right. you know, that was that's that, which I felt like, okay, fine. Well, at least I got a discount on it. <laughs> you know, right. if you're and then if you have to get right. somebody else to do the work, you haven't paid for it twice. Right. I haven't. Exactly. But Gina, I, I, this isn't going to help you with your situation, but I think the best way to not be in a situation where you've got a punch list that's not being finished properly, that the work is not being completed and things are being left undone, is to really do your homework ahead of time because all of this really comes down to whether or not the, you have, you're have you working with a good contractor. And even the best contract in the world is not going to save you from a crappy contractor. I mean, you really need to be working with people who are honest and who are, who are, who are thorough, who are going to do a good job. And uh, so I, to me, the hardest part is just finding that person that's going to do a great job for you. Once you pick, I had a great builder, didn't have problems. I did the, it was a pleasure working with him. The punch list was not an issue. I knew it was going to get done. Um, but I spent a lot of time checking up on him uh, before I, I uh, you know, signed that initial contract with him. So, uh, you know, do your research, check for references, call every reference Go look at work the contractor has done. Look for complaints about the contractor online. Just do, I, I even called the my builder's banker and talked to him. So, I mean, that really is helpful. Once you've done all that work, then then the the part later on down the road is easier because, you know, you're you're working with somebody who's who's good. Excellent. So fun. I feel like I'm going to go rearrange something now. <laughs> Go get those sliders. No. (laughs) (laughs) She's going to get out her her washcloth. Exactly, my washcloth. Whatever, Sandy. So thanks so much for hanging out with us today. We really enjoyed it. And remember, we are here to inspire you to create a beautiful home. Until next time. I want to remind you that we are available for design consults. We take on your design dilemmas, questions, renovations, Any project you want to talk about, any room, any space, we are here for you. And we really do enjoy doing these. And I think we've helped people a lot. So if you want to sign up for a consult, head to the link in the show notes. It's decoratingtipsandtricks.com slash consult. We hope to talk to you soon. 